important thing is education. And that's why it's a great honor for me to come here to ABAC. Because I know that this is one of the colleges on earth that has the most practical training for their graduates to go out into the world and immediately start helping people have a better life. And that's a very important thing. I, I think that Dr. Brown mentioned the fact that I was on the, the local school board in Sutton County. And the reason I got in politics was that we were faced with the loss of the public school system. Back in those days, it was the days of racial segregation. And as you may know, even the most uh, prominent uh, Georgia politicians uh, swore before the, uh, the voters, they would hold up one finger and say, no, not one. And they were swearing before God that if a black child went into a school classroom in Georgia, they would shut down the public school system. So I decided to run for the state senate in order to protect the public school system. And when I got there, I just asked to be on the education committee and eventually got on the, I uh, was chairman of the university committee. And from there, I went on to be governor and president. But when I was president, I found that we didn't have any Department of Education. We had a Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, ATW. And the education part was buried underneath health and welfare. And I thought education ought to be put, improved. So as president, I helped get the Congress to pass and form the Department of Education. And since then, education at least had, had its right to speak up for teachers and for students around the nation as it never had before. Well, Georgia is a great state. I've been very proud to be governor of this state. I've traveled all over Georgia, and I've uh, gotten to know the people in North Georgia and, and South Georgia, East to West, and so forth, and it's still am, am deeply involved in agriculture, which is still our number one industry, uh, as you know. But education in Georgia and many other parts of Georgia are going downhill. Georgia is fourth from the bottom in the number of students who graduate at in the first grade. In the last three years, we have lost 9,000 public school teachers in Georgia. And we've had an increase in the number of students. That's causing more students per classroom. And about half the Georgia school systems in Georgia now are going to an abbreviated school year. Some of them just go to school, a lot of them just go to school four days a week. This is very bad for us. We used to have a very wonderful opportunity for young people who finished high school to go to college with the Hope, Hope Fellowship, Hope Scholarship. And these, the number of Hope Scholars has dropped now by 80,000 in the last two and a half years. In the vocational technical schools, we've lost 45,000 students who no longer can get a Hope Scholarship. Georgia's number one in the whole country in unemployment. Despite the fact that we have wonderful assets in Georgia, we ought to be at the top in education. We ought to be at the bottom in unemployment. We ought to have more teachers highly qualified in the classrooms with a smaller number of students. And as the state has cut back funding for education, 91 counties in Georgia have had to increase property taxes just to make up for the loss. These things need to be changed. And how do you change things that bother you about the future of your own lives, the life of your children, and future grandchildren? That's done by what we call democracy. Because citizens can decide how to correct problems in government. Citizens can decide what will be the future of my county, or my city, or my state, or my nation. And that's where it's very important for all of us to take advantage of our citizenship. If I ask you, I'll ask you this question. When did women in America get a right to vote? 1920. Does anybody know? 1920. 1919. 1919. 1919. What, what brought that about? An amendment to the Constitution? That is not correct. 1920. That's when white women got a chance to vote. African American women didn't get a right to vote until when? 19, the 1960s. And that was one of the basic rights which Georgia was deprived of for many years. 
And now we know that every citizen in America has a legal right to vote. A basic right that we insist on when the quarter center goes to hold an election in Tunisia or Madagascar or Nicaragua, we make sure that everybody has a right to vote. That's not the case in Georgia anymore. That's not the case in many other states. Because when the Republicans get in charge of a governor's mansion and the legislature, like we have in Georgia now, immediately they start trying to deprive people of the right to vote, the right to register to vote. They have been successful with the Supreme Court ruling to do away with part of the Voting Rights Act, which used to require Georgia and, and Texas and so forth, if they wanted to change the law in order to prevent people from voting, they had to get the Attorney General's approval. That was changed, and other changes as well. You all have heard of voter ID requirements. Most of you that go to AVAC probably have a driver's license when you get to be 16 years old. But if you're a young person and you live in a big city and they have good transportation system, streetcars and buses and that sort of thing, you don't need a driver's license. Well, it's very hard for a young person in those circumstances to prove with a voter ID card that they are qualified to vote. And people in retirement homes, they don't have a driver's license. And it's very hard to get another document with a voter ID on it, with a photograph on it, if you don't have a driver's license. And so in many cases, like in Georgia, a law has passed, you've got to have a voter ID in order to vote. And, it, and the reason for this is to deprive people of a right to vote and make it very difficult if you are African-American or if you're Hispanic, <clears throat> if you're a young person like you are, or you're an older person, say, in a nursing home. <clears throat> We have Sunday voting in Georgia, in a few counties. I don't know about Tiff. Did you have voting rights in Tiff on, on Sunday? I don't know. But we have 159 counties in Georgia, as you know. Only in 11 counties in Georgia can you vote on Sunday. Because the opposition is, they know that a lot of African Americans go to church, and then they have opportunities to get in buses and go and vote on Sunday afternoon. In DeKalb County and, and Fulton County and other counties in, in this past Sunday, thousands of people voted. They had lines in, in, the, in around Atlanta and so forth with a thousand people standing in line to vote. That is not permitted in most counties in Georgia. It ought to be. We should do everything we can to get people to vote so that citizens who want to see a better state for well, education and employment and agriculture, small businesses, average family income, gone down $1,500 in Georgia the last three years, can be corrected. We correct our defects and take advantage of our wonderful opportunities by voting. I hope all of you who are registered We'll go to vote. If you haven't voted early, go to vote on election day. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. <laughs> I would like to, but I won't. <laughs> but don't forget to vote. Thank you for letting me talk to you about AVAC and other things. And now if you have, if you have uh, two or three questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Maybe one of you could recognize 